top of this part of the mountain and there's a bunch of little type of caves on the side of this piece of the mountain so we're gonna walk up this way a little further but as you can see shoot and we're way up here trucking uh, some of these uh, some of these can actually uh, become uh, historic uh, things that you're not supposed to touch after 50 years if you get a can that looks like that you're actually supposed to, supposed to leave it there so depending on what it is if it's a if it's something new if you can see Budweiser on it Corona this is obviously a very old, looks like possibly a tuna can or a chicken can possibly. Yeah, I was gonna say like a sardine can or something. Or sardine, yeah. So what's, are we gonna leave it here? Well, I think I think the way it looks and how old it is and the, the, it looks like the gauge of the metal, it looks like the ones that we're supposed to leave. All right, we're gonna leave it here undisturbed. I'm curious, yeah, cause it's definitely been here a while. I know we were saying, you know, very human, few humans have been up in this area obviously uh, somebody cruised by but that thing has been here for years if it's buried in that far like you said we'll just keep it special yeah over 50 years you're supposed to leave it I guess I don't know but if I litter and stays here over 50 years I guess it's special then I don't know <laughs> <laughs> great they made a law on sacred garbage somebody got bored Another overlook where we're at, and the a lot of bridges and holes. You notice some over here on this side over here. Tons of them. I don't know if you can see all the way over there. But you can see there's one. Yeah, that's some hallucinating. I don't know. Yeah, and that's where we're headed. Going this way. Um, hopefully, when we get over this next couple hills, we can see the camp spot. Staying close to the sides of these mountains so we can pick up any caves or anything and not miss it. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's a nice drop off. Oh, oh yeah, brother. This is a huge drop off. This doesn't really do it any justice. And back away from that. Stay close to this. Like it. We'll I don't know if I feel like climbing that. That's quite a drop off. Yeah, careful over there. Oh, yeah. This is a straight drop off right here. Yeah, right, right here, it just disappears and drops down like 50 feet. So I'm going to shut the camera off real quick so I can keep up with Jenkins. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold up guys.
only a couple hundred feet, Jenkins says. Straight up drop. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, it's this big backpack Woo! one too. It's kind of. Yeah. But, uh, without the backpack, I'd say no big deal. But, it, you know, this thing snags a rock and that I, you know, it just takes once. Well, you the other thing I was thinking, I was like, what if I see a snake right now? Oh. You know, while I'm like trying to be all careful. And I jump and then, <laughs> and then my bag throws my weight a certain way and I can't clip the buckle <laughs> to release it in time. You don't want an unpredictable moment at that time. Yeah. It's uh, not too bad. Pucker factor is only about 3 out of 10, though. So. <laughs> Alright. We're going to continue south. Hopefully when we get over this little saddle right here, we see Picture Canyon and the place we'll be camping. Be right back. We just reached the top this little bit. I'm gonna try to calculate where we're at and where I was on my last hike. And if I'm not mistaken, if we continue here, because now this is all kind of downhill. If we continue here and go over this next one, that's gonna be Picture Canyon, because right now I'm noticing, not this big mountain, but this far one here, that little berm, the mine shaft should be just over that, and that's where me and Chris came in. We came over this berm right here, but I think a little more to the left, and then down into that canyon, which I'm thinking is just over this next piece here. I don't know if any of that made sense, but you're gonna have to do with it. Any uh, words, Mr. Jenkins? I say we start running around these canyons looking at stuff. Sounds good. That's what I say. All right. Cover as much ground as we can. Sounds good. And we're making, we're covering a lot of ground, making good time. See you in a bit. Okay. Here's a quick shot. I see the truck down there, so I wanted to zoom in as far as I could. As far as I possibly could. But it's a little black speck right there there that's that little black speck that's the truck Chevy Colorado Chevy Colorado diesel 30 miles to the gallon 6900 pounds of towing capacity that's good that's a good little truck Chevy did a good job there how much torque 370 foot pound I believe that's the uh, the right amount I don't weird know how you know all this about my truck sounds very personal I've been watching you Jenkins <laughs> Stalker. All right, let's do this. Oh, just like 35, 40 mile an hour winds going on here. No biggie. We're still making our way that away. I have to show you guys this. Gets up to, I think, 8,500 uh, at the tallest peak. But uh, a little more mountainous on the other side over there, where we're looking. Nice. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's keep going.
lichen and it's a form of algae? Yeah. We'll get a closer look. Yeah. A lot of times it's green. I think when the, when the when it's uh, the water was kind of dry, it starts getting that orange color. Views getting better and better. Had to bust out the hat. I don't want to get too much sun. So just a little update here. We're gonna go down this, kind of curve out, and then end up yeah down there somewhere to give you an idea of where we're at. Straight up over here is from that mountain that goes kind of over. We came in, me and Chris came in and then camped out there. So we're definitely coming, we're coming from this direction in. Just wanted to give you guys a shot of the area. A little bit of a drop off here. Jenkins is over there making his way down. I'm gonna follow him in a sec. And then this is to the east, Sheep Peak, up that away. It's really, really quiet out here, as always. All right, we're still making our way down. This way, yeah, we're just still making our way down. Anyways, I wanted to stop real quick. I uh, found a little something something. Got a jawbone over here. These always seem to be under trees when I find them. The bones and the skulls. I hate to touch it, but... It looks, I was just going to say, it looks like it's going to come right off. Okay. So, that's wild.
Yeah, the first part of it's a little hollow. The other one's over here. Rest in peace, brother. You know what we'll do? Like on the first hike, like on the first hike when I found these, they were in the shape of an X. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna leave those there like that. You know, Kenny also talked about when he would go spelunking and get up in some of these areas. He said, yeah, I like that area because that's where I find my skulls. I remember him saying that. Something close to it. That's what he's talking about. So I'm going to leave that there. Under this tree. Quick breather. Yeah, you're tired. Okay. If you just get a nice smooth, give me some good shade. Yeah. Looks like a good place for an animal to lay down under there. I'm gonna get behind you and try not to knock too many rocks there down on you. down into that. Yeah, it could be, uh, could be, who knows, maybe it's a mountain lion up there getting to his claws. Maybe it's, uh, it's the bush that's blowing up. We've kind of split up a little bit. Jenkins is sort of scanning that area over there and then I'm doing this area also checking out things along this cliff face there's a couple little interesting areas over here uh, looks like that might be a little cave of some kind some type so I'm gonna go check that out on my way down I gotta go catch up with Jenkins I'm starting to fall behind just wanted to get that on film. But yeah, Jenkins is already way up there. Can't see him. So I gotta get moving. Be back in a bit. Okay, I hit this little wash. This is nice. beautiful out here. It's beautiful when you can walk on something like this after walking up and down this hill, man. There are no trails. It's jagged rock in a lot of areas. Still making our way down to the campsite. Found a nice wash, we're st still walking through. But we're running out of steps. That much.
flies are all over them. Came across these tracks, very interesting. So you have two, two prints here, and then you have like a big, a big print on the back, which looks like two, two hind legs. And then these are possibly the front legs. So you have that, and then I'd say about a five foot, six foot gap, you have that. Same thing, big impression. And then two, two other ones to give you an idea of the size. You know, like that's the hole is on the front is the size of my hand, and this back part is way bigger than my hand. So there's that, and then. You don't really have anything here, and that's and then there's another one up here. It's kind of like it's similar, but it looks like it was slowing down, and it goes up into here, and then kind of disappears. But very wild because it looks like something leapt. You know, like it was moving, it was running there. I mean, I hate to jump to this gun, jump to conclusions, but something like that looked like a paw print of maybe a cat mountain lion out here running, chasing something down. I don't know. Nobody knows. Yes. But that looked recent. Seen a bit. So we're lost. No. <laughs> we're the camp spot that I mark on the last video. We're on it right now. West, north, east. So further up this wash is where is where me and Chris hiked last time out here, and that M-shaped type cave that's in the mountain it's just up here we're gonna go check it out and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you guys how shallow it is and how it's not a cave anymore maybe it got filled in maybe it didn't um, but that's gonna be down here just on the right hand side I'm gonna kind of hug the wall so we don't miss it and then if you continue out here that's picture canyon roger that jenkins is gonna be up there sitting in some shade all right, I'm kicking the camera on right now because I'm at that epic spot. The terrain is so different. A lot more bushes and wildlife or uh, plant life. This fly won't leave me alone, probably because I smell. But right here, okay, you have that M-shaped thing going on. My last video, you know, I go to this area. I go to this area in both videos, and there's another little M type thing right here. Kind of like, you know, all these plants weren't, all these bushes and plants were here last time. And someone's like, you, you walked right past it, Sean. There's the M cave right there. I'm gonna show you guys how shallow this is because you can't really see it. I've noticed on the shots I got, but people were confused, like, why didn't you walk up to that? Well, I'm gonna show you what, what's really going on here. Hold on one sec. So here it is. You know, clearly you can see the zzz, 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 zzz. shape of an M, huh? 
and then there was a little okay, right next to it. But I'm going to show you that you guys that this is not a cave. Was something hanging out here? Um, absolutely. I can already see some impressions in the dirt. Something was hanging out here. Looks like they set a little booby trap for me. Uh, but this is not a cave. This is solid type rock here. But there is an interesting black mark on the top. Get off me. What is that? Did, they, did this used to go down or something? I feel like that's just kind of algae or, or something. I'm really not sure. What is that? It looked like some kind of tooth. I don't, I don't. I don't know what this is. Calcium buildup. There's definitely, like I said, some impressions here. Something was here. It's hard to see if this is, or tell if this is man-made or not, because it does look like it just could have broke off. It's definitely broke off here naturally. I mean, is that soot? Maybe, a little bit. So maybe someone had a fire going right here. I don't know. And then just over is this other thing, and it's not deep at all. You guys an up close shot at it. It's not a it's not a cave. That's really gnarly though. Don't want to go into that if you're a little insect. That's a trap and a half, huh? Kind of cool. And once again, there was definitely something here. See the impressions. The dirt. Here it is.
right, I'm gonna head that away, catch up with Mr. Jenkins. All right, well, once again, we're gonna cut it right there. I still have another 35, 45 minutes of footage that you'll see us getting to the campsite, all that, and then getting out of there the next day. But I think we covered some really cool stuff for this leg of the hike. Obviously, we went through some sketchy parts. We were up towards the top of some of these peaks where the geology and the rock formations get really, really cool. And then we saw those prints that were just leaping Obviously I found that, we found that perished uh, bighorn sheep under that tree. And then we went to where that M-shaped cave hole thing is, there's two of them, that even Kenny goes to on his last video and you see him pan over it. He kinda uh, like stammer or stutters over his words actually when he, when he does it and then he, he kinda keeps going and he's like, yeah, yeah it's not here or whatever. So check out those close up shots because I mean, no environmental expert or geologist, but I'm just calling it how I see it. There's a freaking seam around, you know, the middle part of where, if there was a cave there, that would that that's that would be where it, it was. And the rock is darker. It's not weathered like the outer parts and light colored um, as it should look if it was all just, you know, being weathered at the same time. And then even the one to the left has this slab in there that has that seam, same seam around it. It's darker colored and then everything's a little light. And then you have those two holes that are in the rock that now a spider has made into its little trap, clearly indicating some kind of hollowness on the other side of that slab. So really weird, you know, that's, oh, and then I remember Kenny commenting, I'll try to put it on the screen, where he had found one of those M-shaped caves by Nellis Air Force Base before. He says it. And then clearly he found one here, or he states he did. So who knows, someone may have been watching him. Maybe he was finding the stuff they don't want you to find. No, no idea. A lot going on here. I, you know, I really do hope that Kenny's okay. Um, obviously that would mean he was either kidnapped or faked his death, but you know, I don't really want to find Kenny's bones. I, I hope the guy's okay, and I hope we get to the bottom of this story. But uh, so much going on, crazy. So anyways, hey, next week, final part, part three. Uh, we'll get it posted, and I hope you guys are enjoying everything so far. All right, see you next week.